is build a veranda. We've actually got two to build because there's two units, but I'm just going to focus on one. Hi, Lynn here. We need to start the veranda now because we need to set up for our cladding, but we can't finish the cladding until after the veranda's finished. It's a bit of a chicken and egg situation. You'll see what I mean. Yesterday I made a start by getting the post set for the veranda. These posts are going to be exposed, so what I've done is basically clamp them into place and then peg those clamps to the ground. And at the very top, I've tied braces where we're going to cut it off anyway. I may have set those posts in the wrong place. Um, have another quick look at the plans. I've set the post up correct according to the architectural plan, so 1270 out from the wall. That means that the outside of the beam pocket and the outside of the post are in the same line. However, if you look at the engineering plans, the beam is on the inside of the post and is bolted to the post. So that's definitely not going to work. So what we'll do is go back to the engineer and come up with an alternate solution. Concrete's poured, I rechecked whether the posts are plumb. One was slightly out, so I just nudged that back into position. So I think we're good. There's a three degree angle on this roof, which works out to about 70 millimeters across the width. I've set up the laser on the scaffolding so that I can get a level line across the entire front of the building. And then an offset line to the top of the beam pocket and then add 70 millimeters. And that will be the top of the stringer along the front of the building. Yeah, you good? Yeah. So the stringer needs to be fixed on at 400s, which misses a bunch of the studs. A lot of them go into the lintel, but I'll just get Andrew to put some blocks in where we need them. Now that we've got the stringer set up, we can get on with setting up our cavity battens and the guys doing the Integra can set up their battens and then we'll come back to the veranda once that's all sorted. Good morning, it's been a few weeks. It's gotten a lot colder in that time, but it's uh, starting to feel a lot like winter. I think we've had four frosts now in two weeks. We've swapped the stringer over to H3. It's a little bit of a gray area. H1's technically fine, but then the inspector's gone, eh, it's kind of in the cavity, let's make it H3. We've had the scaffolding changed so that it won't be in the way of the veranda. And we've got an updated engineer's plan so that we can fix our beams onto our post correctly. We've also had our pre-clad inspection, cladding's almost on. Now I can finally build the veranda and we can sort out the cladding. It's going to tie in with that. That's a bit better. I decided to move one of the platforms because I was going to have to work completely hunched over, which is not ideal. The plan here is to use the laser to get a level line from the bottom of the beam pocket to the post and then cut it off there. That's not bad. Just got Andrew doing some blocking inside so that if we pass inspection, possibly today we'll start getting jib on in unit two. Unit one's not quite there yet, but give it another day or so we'll be good. Before I get too carried away I want to check that this post is still plumb and I mean it should be pretty close and if it needs adjustment I'll do that now before I cut the beam to sit on top of it. Four and five. Might even cut one here. happens with these beams so it's a 150 but it's actually 152 and a half ish the beam pocket's 150 so I'm just playing a little bit out with beams like this you always want to check your camber so any bows need to be going up unless I think there's a cantilever in which case you have it down because the loads on the cantilever which will be sticking up does that make sense say 
one down, cut the other one, and then I'm not actually sure how we're going to fix them together. Now, ordinarily with a two ply beam, you would nail it together. However, each of these is 63 millimeters thick, and a maximum gun nail is 90 mil, so you just don't have enough penetration through to the second layer. Instead, I'm going to screw it. Now, you'd also quite often have an engineer detail for fixing if you've got to screw or bolt it together. There's nothing on that. So what I'm going to do is just match what the engineer specified for the stringer. And that is two Googles at 400 mil centers. Plumb the post the other way and tied it to the wall and then I've got a string line on there set so I can straighten it and I can see there's a fair bow in it so what I'll do is tie another piece of timber in the middle to pull it straight. My Amex. The rafters are at 600 mil spacings, it's in one of the engineer's plans. So I'm going to mark that out now and then I'll do each rafter individually. Maybe I should do a video on using a speed square. Let me know in the comments. I've actually seen a video which had a lot of likes which showed using it wrong, like blatantly wrong. So maybe I should do a video on it. Back to using the little skilly with a sharper blade. If you're wondering what this little bit here is for, it's basically just a packer so that we can have a pearl in as close to the end as possible. Whereas if we had it down here, it's not going to be the same line. I mean, it's only a few millimeters, but why not? This Integra panel behind me and the one below the stringer, I specifically told the Integra guys not to put any there and they didn't, but then they've come back I think last week or the week before and put them on for some reason. I say it's lightweight concrete, but it's not that light. I suppose it's relatively light. Do you get why this has got to come off? Yeah, because our thing. Yeah, so we need a flashing to go from the wall over the roof and we need to frame out and get us a feet under here too. Is there now a feet going on there? Yeah. This could suddenly go. That's what I'm afraid of. Oh, okay, that's broken now. Okay, hey, thank you. There we go, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna leave the last raft off just so, well, we've got another one to go against the wall, so the last two. They're quite close together, and the one against the wall needs to be H3, according to the inspector. It's kind of like the string needs to be H3, because as we've got the battens set out, they're within the cavity. I was planning on changing those battens, but it's not worth it now. Andrew and I finished framing this one and he's putting fixings on the other one. A lot like with him getting to pre-cut and pre-mark. I think he might have learned how to use a speed square properly. What do you reckon Andrew? Are you confident using a speed square now? Kind of. Still getting the hang of it. That's right, it takes practice. The next step is putting purlins on. The one next to the wall needs to come out so that the apron flashing has something to be nailed into. And the edge one, 
I think as long as I set it on the edge and the next one's less than 600 from it, it'd be fine. So Andrew, behind you, can you uh, ATL from the outside of the bank? Yeah. Been away for a couple of days and in that time Andrew has finished off the multi grips put on the roof plane braces or strap bracing and put the CPC 80s underneath the brackets will stick below the safete line so what I'm going to do is check them into the post and bog over them good morning so exciting news James has started back so if you don't know who James is he last appeared about three months ago in my video on the 125 millimeter saw review so he injured himself at the end of that video and has been off work ever since but this week he has started back part time, so he's working half days, three days a week. We've started framing the Safik, so because the beam's 150 and the string is 140, we need to frame down. So I started sistering joists, I guess, on. And then we realised that the fascia at the edge is lower, so I've got to quickly cut them off and adjust them, and we're going to have to put blocks along the edge as well. Oh. We mark on my eye. Look at my uh, safety glasses. Don't know if you can see that. So that is from my doggy bar slipping. That would have gone right in my eye. We use safety glasses, boys and girls. So the roofers have finished putting the roofing on and the last thing they've put on is the apron flashing. And then on top of that, we put flashing tape which diverts any water that's coming down the inside of the cavity down the outside of the flashing rather than flowing inside the flashing which would make the flashing completely redundant. With a bung rust, or do you not feel it? My torso, all soft and flabby. <laughs> yep. This well sparkly reminded me about that. So, James here is shot off. He's only allowed to work part days, it's part of the whole ACC thing. Right. That's all nailed off, so the sweet's finished and the veranda is essentially finished. Roofers still need to come back and put some flashings on and then that will be it. The cladding needs to go on above and below it. So that is how you build a veranda, minus the uh, facial injuries. If you enjoyed that video, please flick us a like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Let me know your feedback in the comments, and I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.